Hey everybody, welcome back to Green Joe Coffee School. In today's video, we are covering insulation. Insulation. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about different types, how to do it, the cost, tips and tricks along the way. Just kind of an overview on how to insulate your uh, coffee truck or your food truck. So, if you are new to my channel, I teach people how to get started in the mobile coffee business. Now, that's carts, trucks, trailers, um, kind of all that different apparatus. So if you're getting started with food trucking, a lot of my build out content is gonna help you out. If you're in the coffee shop arena, then a lot of my business stuff, the advertisement and that type of things is gonna help you with that. So, you know, consider subscribing if you're in either of those arenas. But no further ado, I wanna get cracking right on this. So why insulate your truck? It's an extra cost that doesn't necessarily need to happen for you to get inspected a health inspection it's not mandatory by code and regulation um, you can easily start a mobile business without insulating your unit that's you know perfectly fine legal blah 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 the reason why i'm a big advocate of it is it just makes the job so much better you know you're not baking in the hot sun or freezing in the hot cold on either extremes of of the the seasons if you're up north, it's a lot easier to maintain your pipes. They're less likely to freeze over. If you're down south, such as me, I'm in Albuquerque, then you're not just getting, you know, then you're not just getting turned into a, a dried old raisin in, in the sun, you know. Is it needed? No. To me, is it worth the time and the money? Yes. So let's break down what you need to do to get your, your truck insulated or your trailer insulated. All right. So who can do this? Now, I really think this is a do-it-yourself job. Why do I believe that? A couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, it's a low skill set. You're basically just cutting insulation with the razor, fitting it into place. Not much skill involved there. Number two, if you mess it up, it's not gonna go on fire. Nothing's gonna explode. So, you know, the risk is pretty low. And, and number three, it's cheap. They're 15, 16 bucks a panel. So you, even if you mess it up, you, you know, you're out 15, 16 bucks. You're probably not even out that much because you can take that same insulation and use it elsewhere on the truck. So, Okay, so what kind of insulation do I use? There's different types of insulations. There's the spray-in insulation, there's fiberglass, there's foam insulation. I like foam. The fiberglass insulation, one, you're gonna be itching everywhere and it tends to settle in mobile units. The spray insulation is, it's a little, you know, theoretically it's a little easier to do, although you gotta rent all that different equipment but it's more costly, just costs more money. So I use the foam insulation because it's cheap, it's painless, it's easy, you can get it anywhere. You can literally go down to your local Home Depot and they have it there. Now I use one inch insulation because that's the depth of my tubing on my enclosed trailer. If I had a greater depth, say for instance, the walls had a two inch tubing, I've used that like my, my coffee roaster trailer, it had two inches, then I would use two inch foam insulation. Also something to consider if you have the availability and you're dealing with the sun similar to I am where you hit 100, 100 degree days, you may want to consider doubling up on your insulation on your roof if you're able to. So I use one inch insulation. I also use another thing called great stuff. That's literally the name of it. It's just kind of like it's a crack filler, um, but I use it as a, like a spray in foam to fill in the little cracks on the on the trailer when I'm fitting it in. Okay, so what tools are we gonna need? Tools and material. We're gonna need a box cutter, we're gonna need a straight edge, you're gonna need a, some type of marker so you can mark your lines. You're gonna need your insulation plus your great stuff. Um, also, you're gonna need to remove your inner walls. So take a look at how your walls are tacked on. For me, I have an enclosed trailer that uses uh, Phillip head screws. So I can just use a number two Phillip head to, re to remove those. Some of you might have like the little octagon eight stars. So you may want to look at that ahead of time. Go ahead and buy yourself a bit before you get started with that. For the vintage campers, they've had like brad nails or staples. So you might need like a set of pliers or a screwdriver to take those out. Okay, so where should we put insulation? For, for this, I'm going to refer to the second law of thermodynamics the beautiful and intricate and elegant law of entropy. And entropy basically states that heat will travel from its hottest point to the po lowest point. Now, why that's important is we really want to look at how heat is being conducted in our units. So what's the best conductor of heat? Well, 
you know, for that you look at heating elements, what are they made out of? Metals, they're typically made out of metals. So your metal is your conductor of heat. And in your unit, you really wanna insulate around those metals and make sure that those metals aren't able to conduct that heat into your unit or outside of your unit very well. You don't wanna you know, conduct heat from outside the unit to in during the summertime. You don't wanna conduct heat from the inside of your unit to out during the winter time. And for where this is really, really important is for those of you that are doing horse trailers because the entire thing is made out of metal. So it is just one large conductor. You really want to take your time and make sure that you're patching up and insulating all around the sides of the metal. If you have a, a, a one inch tubing, you want to insulate on both sides. If you have, sometimes they have like a kind of a U shape to the tubing you want to get metal you want to get you want to get insulation packed inside of that u shape so that you're also insulating that area so you really just want to insulate everywhere that you can okay so when should we insulate i think this is really early on in the building process you're going to be peeling the walls off right away you don't want to be peeling the walls off once you've painted already you don't want to be doing this stuff once your floors are already done because you're messing with the the great stuff and that stuff's real sticky so you run you want to kind of get this while you're you want to get this done while the truck is still in its early stages so you pull the walls off and you pack in the insulation this is really the time where you want to make the decision on whether or not you're going to have your electric wires run inside your wall like like we do at our house where you can use things like Romex for your wiring or if you're going to run it on the outside of your wall um, where you have to use things like conduit. So that's kind of where the electricity question starts popping up. Do I want to run my electric in or outside of my walls? When we did this, I, I timed it. I made sure to, to hit the clock and keep an eye on the stopwatch. And it took us 90 minutes to do the first section of eight foot of, of an eight foot panel. But after that, we were moving at about 60 minutes per eight feet. And so essentially, this is basically a weekend job. Anybody on the weekend can knock this out pretty easily. All right, so let's talk about how much this costs. Now, a four by eight panel of one inch foam is 16 bucks at Home Depot. So, you know, you gotta just run the calculations based upon your unit. If you're doing, say for example, an eight by 16 unit, okay, well then you're gonna have essentially, you know, four on one wall, four on another, and then two panels up top. So you're gonna have 10 panels total. I would pick up 11 panels while I'm there, buy a little bit extra, you can always return it if you don't use it, but if you need it, you're not having to run back to the, to the store. And then the great stuff, they're three bucks a can, I have a 24 foot trailer and we use six cans. I don't think you're gonna need much more than six cans, but pick up anywhere from four to six cans. Okay, so, so how do you do the insulation? It's real straightforward stuff. You wanna just go in and remove the trim. You wanna remove your plywood um, or your, your particle boards or whatever your walls are. You're basically gonna measure your foam, try to get it exact as you can because it's easier for the foam to, to hold up. In fact, if you can get it a little bit larger than the space, we're talking 1 16th of an inch, not, not super large, but ever so slightly larger than the space is supposed to fit in, you can actually compress the foam a little bit so that it, it's snug. You place the insulation in and any large cracks you want to fill in with more insulation, but if you have small cracks, that's a good time to use that great stuff and just fill it in with the spray foam. Uh, a couple tips on the great stuff, make sure you use gloves. That stuff is sticky as hell and uh, you, you don't want it to, to get on your clothes or anything that it's gonna get on, it's gonna be difficult to get off. If you overspray, which always happens, it's easier to let that stuff dry and go back and cut it with a, a razor blade than it is to try to smear it and wipe it off. Again, it's really sticky. So if, you know, if I overspray for whatever reason, just let it dry come back a couple hours later when it hardens up and just chip it away at it with a, with a razor blade or screwdriver or something. Okay, so once all your cracks are filled and you've completely insulated your wall, then you just put your walls back up. You put the plywood back up, you put your trim back up and you're done. That's my video on insulation. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're interested in uh, learning more from me, you can always subscribe to the, the channel if you like. My best stuff is saved for the master class. I, have, I teach a class on how to do this where we do weekly check-ins, there's consultation involved, business plan, how-to videos, complete course content. So if you're interested in that,
go to the website www.greenjoecoffeetruck.com and you'll see it all there. My name is Vince. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it.